120 in the old book. <laughs>
thing that when it's just the dad, I could say I had a the baby was kicking and I couldn't breathe. I said, yeah, I was, I was going to have to borrow Brother Earl's oxygen machine. <laughs> <laughs> she made it through, thank the Lord. Proverbs 29, if, if it's okay, I want to just read this whole chapter right quick and then we'll talk about some things. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. You can say amen right there. Yeah, amen. Okay. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. He that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land. Now you can keep that in mind because we're using that as our title for the subject this afternoon. Establishing the land. He that uh, the king by judgment establisheth the land, but he that receiveth gifts overthrow it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth the net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regarded not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright. Y'all catch that? But the just <coughs> seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind. Did you see that? But a wise man keepeth it in till afterward. If a ruler hearkeneth to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their, both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child that left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, he shall give thee rest, yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. By the way, there wasn't any church in the Old Testament. I believe that the initial context of that verse right there is probably talking about a nation, the nation of Israel. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Uh, we use that to talk about the church a lot of times, but... That can't be the primary context here. Verse 19, A servant will not be corrected by words, but though he, for though he understand, he will not answer. See it that thou a man that is hasty in his words. Y'all see that part? There is more hope of a fool than of him. He that de delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bereath it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Kind of reminded of a psalm right there where it said that uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Verse 26, many seek a ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Interesting. This proverb has a lot to say about a nation or a kingdom and its leadership. I told you we were talking about establishing the land. We would like to think that America is well established. Established. I hope that we all understand that historically speaking, America is still a young country. Right. Uh, we're not that old of a country. We would like to think that America is well established, but I think we're forgetting something today, and I'm talking, when I say us, I'm talking about Americans in general. We're forgetting that uh, our country was established on the Word of God. 
Without the Word of God, George Washington said, you cannot rightly govern a nation. I'm not so sure that America's foundation is too steady right now. Uh, we're, we're not so anchored to God anymore. As the old song says, we're drifting too far from the shore is what we're doing. We've heard our presidents in our lifetime give what they call the State of the Union Address. I want to read verse number one again and then I'm going to give you a real State of the Union. He that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. Let's talk about the State of our Union. America has has been often reproved. I'm not talking about by other countries. I'm talking about by the people of God who have stood in the churches and in the pulpits of God all across our country and have marked and called out sin and have sounded the warning to a country that is walking away from God. This country has been reviewed. We've been reproved. America... Americans have hardened their necks. Still, stubborn. We've become hardened toward the Word of God. We don't need it. We've become hardened to the church of the living God. The, the state was never instituted to protect, uh, so that to be protected from the church. The laws were instituted to protect the church from the state. But we've come. America, that is, have, we have become hard-hearted toward the Lord's churches. The churches on whose back this country has been built and established. The Lord's churches. Well, I think they said it all whenever they said church is non-essential. Don't you? Yeah. I mean, I think that speaks volumes of where we are as a country. I told you y'all wouldn't like this too much. Here's another thing. America is looking down the gun barrel of sudden and swift destruction and that without remedy. Listen to me, friends. When God has had enough, and I don't pretend to know when that's going to be, but when God has had enough of a nation that has gone away backward, a nation that has turned their back on God, when He's had enough, there's no law there's no policy, there's no deal, there's no Republican, there's no Democrat that's going to put a stop to it. Let's just go back through here, just take a few minutes and go back through here and look at some of these verses and see if we can get a handle on where America is according to God's Word. It, it, it doesn't matter what I think about our policies or our ways in America. What matters is what God does. Right. So let's look at where America is. Let's try to find our nation in this Scripture. I mean, let's, uh, let's face it. The Bible is a mirror, a looking glass, if you have an old King James Bible, which I would highly recommend. Uh, if the Word of God is a mirror, let's just take a look in the mirror. I mean, if we want to know, here's the thing. Nobody wants to talk about this stuff. Nobody wants to be unpatriotic, but the reality of it is we can't fix it until we admit there's a problem. So let's just look at it. Number one, I got a whole list of things here, so... We may not list them one, two, three, four, but you just follow along with me. In verse number two, the first thing I want to look at and say is this. Things go good for a nation when its leaders choose to side with God. Amen. Look at verse number two again. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. It goes good for a country when its leaders choose to side with God. Now, I want to make a disclaimer right here. If you're asking me personally, am I going to vote for Trump? Probably so. Probably so. Unless somebody, unless Jesus comes back and runs for pre president on a Republican ticket. Right. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't, I say that, I mean, it's funny, but the reality of it is I don't know who else we would vote for. I don't know who else I could vote for. Uh, but, but I hope you understand that just because Trump throws the word God around here and there and plays a little game that he likes to play with the Christian community, I am not impressed by that. I'm not sucked in by that, and I am not up here to, to promote Trump as a person. If he chooses sides with God, then I'm on Trump's side, because I'm on God's side. But I just tell you right now, I don't like the guy. And I don't care if they're recording this or not, I hope he hears it. <coughs> Things go good for a nation when its leaders choose to side with God. God did not come to get on our side. He came to get so that we could be on His side. Amen. Is that what we're seeing today? Well, we have the, the whole... The whole uh, moral issue of abortion and I mean it's in the news every single day I, I don't know how you can read your Bible where they where they had their children the Old Testament where they made them they, they, they led their children through the fire talking about sacrificing their kids I don't know how you can read thou shalt not kill and say you're on God's side Whenever you're promoting abortion, we're talking people promoting full-term abortion. Well, I don't know how you stand with the LGBTQ crowd and claim to be on God's side. And by the way, that's on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. Melania Trump holding a fundraiser at Mar-a-Lago for what's called the Law Cabin Republicans, which is a group of, re of Republicans that are homosexual. Let's celebrate it. Let's party with them. I don't know about you, but that don't sound a whole lot like we're on God's side. Amen. The next thing in, in verse 4, I'm going to quick verse 4 in the last part of verse 4. But he that receiveth gifts overthrow it. Let me say this. The nation that is dependent on handouts from other countries is on shaky ground. I'll just throw this at you. Our national de deficit is in excess of $30 trillion. $30 trillion. Moving on. In verse number 5, I would say this. Words are cheap. A man flattereth his neighbor, spreadeth a net for his feet. I thought about that. Words are cheap in America. God cares what happens to Israel and in Israel. And we talk all the time, both sides of the aisle, about how we are standing with Israel. We are allies with Israel. Let me say something. It is a disgrace, the protest that they had uh, the other day when Netanyahu was addressing our Congress. Protesting and burning flags. Peaceful, my hind leg. They were out for blood. Well, preacher, they've got a right to freedom of speech. I understand all of that, but I'll tell you something. Those flags that they were burning were not theirs to burn. Should have been arrested for. Number four, the true cause of the poor is often neglected. Look at verse number 7. The righteous consider the, the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. That's where we're at. We're just pretending like we're in favor of the poor in America, but the true cause of the poor is being neglected. We, we just choose not to face the reality of poor, our leadership in this country is delusional when it comes to their policies for helping poor people. Yeah. The welfare system is a joke. Yeah. How many times you stood in line, and, I, and we could even apply this to the Texas welfare system, how many times have you stood in line in the grocery store behind somebody that bought their groceries with the Lone Star card and then pulled out cash to buy their beer and alcohol with? Oh, 
Well, I don't know about you, but that, in, that infuriates me a little bit because I'm the one, that partially the one paying for that Lone Star call. Paying off college debt and giving out of stimulus checks during COVID hasn't changed one thing in this nation. Policies that drive out big businesses have affected small businesses and farmers too. Big government overreach has all but squashed free enterprise in this country. We've been regulated to death. I think it was Ronald Reagan that said the, the most fearful words in all of the human in all of the English language are these. We're from the government and we're here to help you. <coughs> the true cause of the poor. Are we really helping poor people? Well, we cater to a bunch of lazy people in this country. Sounds good on the books. Let me move on verse number 9. It talks about de debating debates that go on concerning major issues. Look at verse number 9. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, which by the way is exactly what just happened in the presidential debates. When a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. How do you have a meaningful discussion with some of the leaders that we have in our country right now? I mean, Biden doesn't make any sense when he talks. Whether that's his fault or his age, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not. But here's the thing. Harris don't make any sense when she talks either. She just talks in circles. I don't need anybody to explain to me what a Venn diagram is. I got that. I can understand that. Tell me how that's going to help improve this country and draw us closer to God. That's what I want to know. How can you get to the bottom of the LGBTQ issue when you're debating with people who when they are asked what is a male or a female, their answer is, I don't know, I'm not a doctor. Well, I'm not one either, but when my kids were born, I could tell which one they were. We're debating with foolish people. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Verse number 10 brings to light the reality of violence and hate speech. The bloodthirsty hate the upright and the just seek his soul. Violence and hate speech. Bloodthirsty people. People that are on the news right now that, are, that have been interviewed. The liberal left that have been interviewed and had the audacity to say on national television, I wish the bullet would have hit him between the eyes. By the way, it wouldn't have been any more right for us to say that toward Biden either. Right, right. Both sides. Verse number 12. A nation that allows itself to be deceived. A ruler, if a ruler hearkeneth, hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. America is allowing itself to be deceived. And this has been going on a long time before Biden and Trump. <coughs> Americans have been brainwashed. Americans have been led to believe that the Muslims love our country. Well, they want what we've got. There's no doubt about that. Uh, they, they want our money. They want our... our uh, Artillery, they want our military power, and they want every Christian dead if that's if at that, if all possible. Verse 16 speaks of increasing wickedness. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. 
don't know about you, but nothing surprises us anymore when we turn on the news, does it? We've got the Olympics going on in France, and they had a big drag queen party over there, and, and, and a big old, uh, big old fat guy sitting up in the middle, and, and, and the whole picture was supposed to be the, the picture of a, a, a remake of, of Christ, of Da Vinci's painting of Christ at the Lord's Supper, at the Last Supper, with a bunch of drag queens. And I know that that's France and that's not here. But let, let, me, let me just say this. Let me put it into perspective. If I had been in charge of the U.S. Olympic team, we would have loaded the kids back up on the bus and come home. Amen. Period. Amen. I mean, I've loaded our kids up and, and, and refused not to go to a conference just because the guy that was speaking wasn't a Baptist. I, that ain't no telling what I would have said if I'd have been there and saw that. Increasing wickedness. Nothing surprises us anymore. I can remember when contracting HIV through sexual perversion was a reproach. And now it's celebrated. Now they're selling certain drugs just so you can keep living that way if you want to. Just enjoy it. Verse 18. A nation with no real vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Kamala Harris talks about being future focused as opposed to what she thinks is Trump's past focus. She talks about being future focused. The vision that she has for our country is not going to bring us closer to God. Verse 23 talks about pride. A man's pride shall bring him low. Our foremost leaders in this country are egomaniacs. If they're interested in God at all, he's just the sideline interest. They're just dropping that name to get a few more votes. <coughs> That's right, preacher. Verse number 24 talks about partnering with thieves. Who are, who are our closest allies would be a good question. Verse number 26 talks about when the people are more impressed with a man than they are with God. Uh, verse 20 and verse 26. Many seek the ruler's favor. I tell you, the president, whoever's running for the president of the United States needs to be seeking my favor. I don't really care what Trump thinks about me. Verse 27. Pretty much sums up our political climate. An unjust man is an abomination to the just. And on the other side of the aisle, he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. We quote the, you know, we, we, we quote the Pledge of Allegiance and talk about one nation under God. And I mean, I wished it was, but we're one nation divided. That indivisible part is just a hope and a prayer because we're a nation that's divided right down the middle. I want to say this to you. Our nation is soon to be without remedy. Preacher, is revival possible? Is revival a possibility? I want to remind you, revival is always a possibility as long as we're living and breathing. Amen. It's not over until God says it's over. Do we pray for a revival? Absolutely. Do we pray for a revival in America? Absolutely. But I want to remind you that revival is never characterized by compromise or complacency, but revival is always characterized by radical change. For revival to break out in America, listen to me now, a lot of people are going to have to get saved. Yep. Born again. Yep. And the church is going to have to get right. And by the way, the church getting right has to happen first because it is the church that's been given the responsibility of leading people to the Lord. 
That's why Peter said the judgment of God must begin and it must begin at the house of God. Folks, America is not getting better. I hope you understand that. I, I, I know this is a downer, but we need to understand our country is not getting better. Right. Everybody's got their Make America Great Again hat. I'm not faulting anybody for that. I'm not faulting anybody for getting on the Trump train. But I want you to understand Donald Trump cannot do. Only God can do what has to be done through the repentance of the people. Preacher, is there anything in here good that you can give us? I know it's not a feel-good sermon. It wasn't meant to be. I think it's important for us to see our country the way God sees our country, for us to face the reality that Daniel and Isaiah and Jeremiah had to face whenever God allowed Israel to go off into captivity. They saw their country going off. And that's a reality that they had to face. There comes a time when God will, will judge a rebellious nation. But there is one good thing in here. And I'll point it out to you in closing. Verse number 16. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. Listen to this now. But the righteous shall see their fall. Here's the point I want to make. No matter what happens in America, no matter what happens in this world, the saved of God will live on to see the day when the Lord makes everything right again. I love America. I know you do too. More than that, I love Texas, and I know you do too. The great state of Texas. I love the fact that we live in a republic, and I, and I know you love that too. But more than all of that, more than all of that, we're looking for a kingdom more than we're looking for a country. Right. Or if you want to say we're looking for a country, yeah, we are. We're looking for a country and a city whose builder and maker is God. Now, we'll live on to see it when God makes everything right in this world again. Establishing the land. Where are we at in America as God sees it? I think that's a pretty good picture right there. I think that's a pretty good picture. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for allowing us to be in your house today. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, even when the truth hurts and we don't want to hear it, uh, we thank you that you put a, you hold a mirror of your word up in front of our face so we can take a good long look and see where we are. Lord, we know America can never be the America that we want until we take a long look and see ourselves as you do, as you see us. And Lord, we just ask and pray that you would grant us revival in our land. And Lord, uh, help us to understand it has to begin with us, it has to begin with me, it has to begin with our church has to begin with the churches all across this land. And then, Lord, help us to take the gospel. Lord, help us to see people saved in this country that it might be spared for a while longer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.